I'll uh, just run through a couple of housekeeping rules um, and hopefully help you out um, in the presentation. So um, when watching this, we'd always recommend uh, using either Google Chrome or um, Microsoft Edge. We find those browsers work best with uh, Crowdcast. Uh, throughout the presentation, we'd love to hear your thoughts, feedback. Uh, oh, it's brilliant to see that there's so many of you already uh, putting in your chat thoughts, where you're tuning in from. So thank you to all those that have done so, so far. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, there are two options that we can do. I'll be looking after the chat so I can keep tabs on where you have questions. Or there is a chat. Uh, chat question box as well. So please feel free to pop those in there. Uh, we've got a couple of polls as well. We'd like to hear your feedback uh, and thoughts. So please feel free um, to answer some of the polls. We've got one uh, in at the minute, which is just understanding where you're tuning in from industry wise. Um, and I think that's about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute, turn my camera off and pass you over to Michael and, Kath, uh, and Caitlin to take it away. Excellent. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Sam. And thanks for, um, for attending. We've had a lot of interest uh, in this. It's a really hot topic uh, to, to discuss at the moment. So um, we're pleased really to be able to, to share what we've learned in this, um, in this space um, and really how we've, um, how we've developed um, some ideas um, this year. So I'm Michael Honigman. I'm the Managing Director and Owner of, um, of Jupiter Play. Uh, for those that, that don't know, we, we have been around um, some time. Um, now we're 25 um, years in October um, this year, so we've been around for um, for a while. We we try to do things um, a little bit differently, and hopefully you'll see that through our presentation um, today. Um, and Caitlin's just going to introduce herself. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, it's really nice to see so many of you here today. Um, so I'm Caitlin. I'm the business development executive at Jupiter. So I look after our projects and customers in the central region of England. Um, and I studied interior and spatial design for my degree. So looking into kind of the psychology of um, spaces and exploring how different environments can influence human behaviour and social interaction. So that's quite interesting for today's topic. Um, and I was also a very active teenage girl not too long ago, so I can massively relate to the topic today as well. Thanks, Caitlin. So just a little bit of background on the um, company. We are a, an independent, um, family-run um, company. Uh, we believe that we offer unique, um, innovative um, solutions. Uh, we really care um, about the projects that we um, that we deliver. Um, we we're a small business, so we don't we don't try and do um, everything. We're very focused on making sure that the projects that, that we do um, are interesting um, and really fit for purpose and fit for the, the end user, um, really. And we live by our um, our values. Um, our key um, values um, really are that we like to be creative. Um, we have a commitment to the the projects um, that we that we deliver. Um, we always looking at um, high quality um, products. Uh, I think we're passionate about what we um, what we do, um, and we develop uh, trust um, between um, our clients and um, our, our team. So if you just skip on that again, Sam, I've already done gone through this one. Yeah, so what we'd like to um, look at today was um, the learning outcomes here and what does, um, you know, what does the research say, uh, what teenage girls are, are asking for. And we're going to talk about two um, things that we've been working on um, quite closely in core um, and um, box up. So first we're going to start with the, um, the research and Caitlin's going to take you to that. Thank you, Michael. Yes, yeah, so to introduce the, um, the topic, I'll be running through yeah, what research is out there. Uh, we have had some slight technical diff um, issues on this video, so um, we'll skip back past this one, but I'll share it in uh, the follow-up that we do. Um, so yeah, if we could just skip on to the next slide. Yeah, so um, there are some amazing organisations and champions um, and charities, sorry, who have been doing amazing work in this space by researching, campaigning, hosting workshops and also collecting data to really elevate the conversations around this topic, which has been um, really successful. So Women's Champion, Make Space for Girls, Women in Sport and Yorkshire Sport Foundation for not only um, the hard work, work that they're doing in the area to strive for change, but also for providing us with this data, which um, will inform our future design decisions to create spaces, spaces that are inclusive for all. 
And I think it's also really important to speak about the book Invisible Women, um, which provides an insight into the data biases that often go unnoticed in various aspects of society. So um, that's included in urban planning, planning as well. Um, and this can be for anything, for example, uh, women's toilets. Why is there always a queue for the female toilets? And it's because they've not been designed for women. It's been designed um, with the data that we have for men. So the book goes into detail about how the lives of men have been taken to represent those overall um, and how women haven't been accounted for. And this is a recent um, report from a research project with Countryside Properties, LSE Cities and Make Space for Girls um, in five different locations in Brent. So the report takes the findings from the young researchers to help um, developers and planning authorities improve safety and um, inclusivity in public spaces. Um, so it's just some of the key themes that it highlights such as safety, common transport patterns, disappoint, um, disappointment of the existing amenities, their perception of current youth facilities, and also uh, the lack of input and contribution that they have in the public realm. Um, and then it also displays the key recomm recommendations for planning authorities as well. And there were significant in this report. There were some significant gendered differences between young women and young men's usages of these facilities. So, as you can see um, here, fifty percent of men use parks regularly in comparison to only six percent of young women. Um, so, yeah, there are some huge differences there, and it's a really engaging report. Um, if you want to read it, it's called Youth Research in Residence Report. And that ties in nicely with the Make Space for Us report commissioned by Yorkshire Sport Foundation and Women in Sport. Um, and it highlights two really key issues faced by teenage girls here. So one is that they lose interest in sport and two is that 80% of girls don't feel safe outside. Um, and this is something that I can really relate to as well. So when I was younger, um, I was always very active. I did lots of sports and I really enjoyed PE, um, learning different sports as well. Um, but throughout school, it was very much something that the boys did. So they had their after school clubs and the teams, um, the teams, yeah, which were open um, to the girls as well. But um, it felt like a space where I very much didn't belong. So um, I felt more comfortable kind of just doing cheerleading and then gradually lost interest in sport as well. Um, but this is a really interesting report from a school in Spain. So you can see the blue lines mark the pathways of the boys and the red lines mark the path pathways of the girls. So uh, the boys are using the whole space compared to the girls who are primarily just using the edge um, and one side of the, side of the space. Um, and when you actually look what's in the space on the left hand side, there's two ball courts. So yeah, we can see here that the girls are actually being pushed out to the side because the facilities just aren't there for them and it's been dominated by the boys. And this quote actually summarises that really, not, uh, well, not really nicely, but it summarises that. So um, the chief executive of Women in Sport, um, it, it says here that teenage girls don't voluntarily leave sport. They're being pushed out as a consequence of deep, deep-rooted gender stereotypes. Um, so by not having the facilities there for everybody, it does just make you feel like uh, you don't belong in that space. So what are the uh, current teenage facilities? Um, so the go-to options are very traditional individually. They all offer something quite unique and very specialised. However, just in general, the audience that they're aimed at is mainly sporty males and they can become very dominated by that particular user. So they're just isn't enough um, options or enough variety for other teenagers to use. And there are so many other different types of teenagers out there other than just the sporty male, uh, which seems to be the only one that we're currently primarily catering for. Um, and I believe we're going to pause for a minute just to put a poll up for everybody uh, to answer. Yeah, so the, poll, the polls are on the right-hand side. Um, here, if you scroll down the, the icons, um, you'll find the, um, the polls. Um, and here, we're kind of asking um, which industry um, are you are you from? Um, and did you use uh, a mugger um, growing up um, or, or now? 
um, even is that something that you you did all the time sometimes not not at all so um, if you wouldn't mind just spending um, 30 seconds um, just um, filling in that poll for us that would be tremendous So um, yeah, while everybody's doing that, um, this is a really key report which highlights who is actually using teenage facilities. So um, in last year, Make Space for Girls asked people to take part in a citizen science uh, project, counting how many teenagers were using the facilities in the local park and how many of these were girls. So the report revealed that actually over overall, 88% of teens using these facilities were boys and for muggers specifically 92 percent of the users were male so we know that actually the data shows that these facilities aren't spaces for girls and again so by having this data it's really important and really informative as we can use it to um, help us make those future um, decisions that can benefit everybody and this is taken from the make space for us report um, with the York Sport Foundation and Women in Sport. So it's really highlighting again that girls don't want to use their parks, but they feel like um, they want to use their parks, sorry, but they feel like being pushed out, as you can see from the quotes here. Um, and the Football Foundation have initiated a space to create safe, inclusive, and accessible play spaces for communities. However, it very much um, just at the bottom right here, however, it very much looks like a traditional mugger um, and there are much better solutions for this to be safer, more inclusive and more accessible for everybody to enjoy and just to make the, the spaces look more exciting and fun and welcoming. And to conclude this section, so, we don't believe that there's enough data in this space and we're actually participating in a study with a PhD student at Coventry University looking at further data on what makes an active playground. So, um, yeah, we hope to have the findings um, published late, late this year, um, if not then early next year. So um, now we'll look at what are teenage girls actually asking for. Um, and this is a crucial piece of research we realised could really help us push our concepts further. So it highlights five key anchor points that really matter to teenage girls and um, offers opportunities where parks and open spaces can align with those to create more meaningful and relevant spaces to engage girls in parks. So if we take a look at this, what, what actually matters to girls? Um, the first one, having a support network is vital um, in helping girls feel like they belong in these spaces uh, being socially connected so social media and technology play a big part in teenage girls lives today and um, so encouraging the use of technology in parks is really important and it creates an environment where they feel comfortable and confident and actually want to spend time there um, and this can be done in some really innovative and creative ways which we'll share later on uh, so being independent and having no experiences so let's stay away from what's traditional offering moments of pride, creating challenge, build confidence. Um, again, this can be done in some um, really different and interesting ways. And finally, on top of, um, keeping on top of it all. So we want girls to prioritize time spent outdoors. So let's create these positive experiences that are exciting, safe and welcoming enough. Um, and I'll hand over to Michael now to talk about the consultation process. And I think um, one of the things that has come out of this is um, really is ask you know ask the teenage girls what they um, what they want. So um, so we've done that actually we've done that in a number of um, a number of different ways. Um, but one of the things that we've really um, found is that girls don't know what they don't know, um, and if they hadn't seen something before or come across something before, they were they were unaware of this. So. What we did was we, we looked at um, the feedback that we were we were getting um, from um, these events. Um, we looked at the, the research that, that was out there um, and we challenged our, our team and we challenged our designers. And, and what makes us uh, different is that we have a global partner program. Um, so we have a number of different suppliers um, around the world and they all have teams of um, designers um, often 
and they are um, young girls um, as well. So um, we had a really good pool um, to, to pull from, and this was from um, Finland and Holland and Spain and Germany. Um, so um, we were able to, to call on that, um, that knowledge and that expertise um, really to, to look at what, what, what's out there, what do we have already um, within, um, within our product portfolios that would really answer um, these questions. Um, and what more do we need to do? You know, what work do we need to do to, to fill um, to fill in some of these um, these gaps? So we started looking at um, some of the interventions um, that we could um, we could come across. And one of the big things to come out was some some hangout areas and some some seating. Um, this was being asked for at, at, at different levels, at, at different heights, um, in areas where people could um, socialise. Um, face together um, or interact in, um, in groups. Um, so these are some of the interesting ideas that, that came out of the, uh, the first kind of sketchings um, on this was some hammock type areas, um, so some rope structures that were that were in different um, heights. Um, we've got these uh, kind of climbing blocks and what was really interesting, um, we put these into uh, a project uh, recently. Uh, and actually, a lot of the the, the graffiti and the, the tagging, in fact, nearly all of the graffiti and the tagging on it was um, with girls' names, um, etc. So, so they were kind of using this area in the way that they um, they were supposed to. Um, to be fair, you know, we then looked uh, at you know what what games, what fun can we have? It's not about traditional sport. We're thinking about um, you know not just exercise um, activity, but just having some fun. Um, and doing some things um, here. So we've got some um, some table tennis with some seating um, around. Um, we have this big um, balancing um, mat where you have to kind of um, use your balance to, to, to get across. Um, the bottom right, there's a table tennis table with a difference. It's a group game and it's circular, um, so a little bit different in um, how, um, how it gets used. Um, at the top, we've got some interesting kind of um, sculptural type um, areas that people can can sit on along with a big um, dish that can take lots of people which was shown on um, a previous um, photograph um, actually so we started to put these um, things together and swings um, came up as something that was um, was really important and one of the challenges with um, swings always was to make them higher you know can we make uh, can we do higher swings and um, I think I remember certainly growing up, and I'm sure many of you do, um, the, the swings were giant then. Um, and, you know, you had a real big um, activity on them. It was really um, hard to get them moving um, properly. But once you, um, once you did, they were really, really exhilarating. And they've been brought down in height, really, um, to, to reduce the, the cost of safer surfacing um, these days. Um, but there are lots of options now for um, for higher swings, um, which is great, and um, group swings. Um, and this one on the bottom left, I felt was quite interesting to um, to include um, because the, the two swings interact with um, with one another. Um, so one um, swings, and you can make the other um, one swing um, alongside you. I thought that was really interesting for um, potentially for um, children with special needs um, also. So although um, Teenage Girls has, I suppose, um, focused our, our thinking on this. We're really thinking much more about the, the community um, as, a, um, as a whole. And there's a giant um, swing there on the, on the left um, as well. Technology was mentioned, and technology was mentioned um, a number of times um, through, through these reports and um, how can we use um, tech uh, creatively, um, really to have more fun um, and to have more, uh, more play time. So two products that we, that we feature here are the, um, the Sutu, which is an interactive um, football wall. has a number of different games um, loaded on the, the system. Um, you can choose to um, make the whole wall go different colours as you hit the different, um, the different squares, um, or you can hit the ball um, as hard as you can and it'll give you your miles, um, miles per hour. Um, or you can chase a square um, and create a, a high score. Uh, so that's really quite um, quite interesting. Our initial kind of feedback on on this when we were having people log in is that we did get the, the gender uh, there, and about thirty or just short thirty percent of users on on this um, were, were girls, which we felt was quite was quite interesting. Uh, and on the right here we have the um, Phono uh, DJ booth. So it's an outdoor, fully functional um, DJ booth uh, made of concrete. 
um, quite incredible um, product and people are really amazed at what, what you can achieve um, on this. And I think when you get to, uh, to teenage age groups, I've got two, two teenagers myself, I've got an 18 year old and a 17 um, year old. And when they were um, 13, uh, 12, 13, 14, really they were out of playgrounds. Um, but this type of um, product and the, um, the interactive range that they had really, um, really engaged them. And my, my son in particular on the, um, on the floor, he ended up buying a little DJ booth um, at, at home um, that he could practice on um, as well, having, um, having seen this. So there are different opportunities um, there, which is fabulous. And what we wanted to look at now was how do we, how do we make that all work? How do we make that all work together? Um, sorry, I have a dog barking in the in the background. The joys of the joys of working from home. Um, yeah, so how do we put this together into um, into a project and, and use it in such a way that that you know teenagers people can can understand how they can build a, a project um, together. So we've looked at this um, toolkit um, and see if we can use these um, these little segments to build um, a more interesting um, project and a more interesting scheme. And this is where we kind of came across um, core and we developed um, core, which is the, the next section that we're, we're going to, to talk about. So just to introduce um, core, um, we thought all of these um, elements that are really interesting um, and how could we make these, uh, I suppose, assets that we could um, we could develop um, parts or, uh, or do them as an alternative to, to the provision um, that's there um, already. So the first thing to think about was what would a, a gender neutral um, mugger um, look like? And this was our first, I suppose this was our first attempt um, at, at looking at this. And what we tried to do here was, uh, I suppose, break up the space and take away the, the cage. So it was freedom from that, that cage um, and creating different areas um, with different, um, different activities. So Fairly, um, fairly crude um, example, but I really um, we used this to um, to start our thinking. And then we went back. I suppose we went back to the, the the research that was there and thought about you know how could we have things that that actually um, fill these opportunities that came out of this um, research. So create opportunities um, to enjoy activity with with friends and family. Obviously making a, a space inclusive as inclusive as possible. Really. Um, really would help um, with that. You know, build on existing habits behaviors and use tech um, innovatively. So we're thinking, we're thinking interactive um, here. Um, inspiring discovery of new experiences and, and possibilities. Um, I'm going to just mention the name Box Up, but we can talk about this um, later. And this is about having equipment um, where people um, need it um, most and would use it. Uh, and this confidence building is, is really important. And we really like to think that these um, these spaces could have some activation uh, alongside them, um, similar to the, the park run kind of movement, if we could have um, something that kind of joins this. i um, really excited about what's happening with park play um, at the moment, and we think that this is a real good synergy be between what they're doing and what we're doing um, here um, as well. And just reframing part of time well spent, so getting the, the data and getting more data um, from this. So we've looked at um, how we can make things work um, within these uh, within these spaces. So the next thing really was to categorize, you know, what 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 do we have? You know, what what's in with our range? What can we um, what can we do to, to make this happen? So we looked at kind of ball games, um, we looked at a hoop sports, but more importantly we looked at some of the um, the things that were maybe on the, the periphery. So um, dance and performance, uh, social seating and, and furniture. And we thought that there was so much more that could be done. Um, in that space and making a space uh, much more welcoming, um, much safer um, to be in and having people dwell in these spaces for um, for longer. Um, we also looked at the different kind of games, you know, that could be played and um, that are just fun that maybe to do in a, in a park. So it might be things like, um, you know, cornhole or um, even um, table tennis or something with a net. But even simply um, some chess sets and some some draft sets, uh, that type of thing. And um, fitness was important as well. So we looked at um, fitness and how uh, we could use uh, fitness equipment, maybe a little bit more more creatively, um, as part of you know a wider um, a wider project and 
and we've talked a little bit about active interactives um, also. So how would this um, how would this look? So we started developing these uh, these modules, and these modules were designed in such a way that they could um, they could fit together. And I, and I suppose in our, our mind we were always thinking about um, a mugger is put on a planning application and um, something like that, and it's a it's a rectangular a space that's kind of on a drawing maybe already. Uh, and we looked at that, we thought, okay, what what can you do on that? Generally, it's it's football and basketball. We thought, okay, can we um, can we recreate something that's about the same price point, um, but takes away the fencing um, and becomes um, that uh, that money if you like gets spent on on equipment that was much more much more interesting. So we've developed a range of um, of different modules that can can be put together and thinking about you know how can we how can we build a space up. So I think the most important thing was that um, adaptability uh, with it and the, the ability really for all ages um, to use it. And you find this with, um, you know, with parks that different um, groups use the parks in different ways at different times. Even swings are, are like that, basket swings in particular get used by you know, different age groups at, um, at different times of the, um, of the day. And how could we create a space that, that actually could be busy? Um, you know, it could be busy all the time with different demographics, using it at different times. It could be a, a real um, social, um, social hub with, you know, no barriers to um, to entry, and give some unique, um, active um, experiences. So this is how we started to to build the the picture, um, of the um, the core um, concept. And the next thing really was to uh, you know to look at can we put all of these things and we call these the, the core essentials we think that these um, elements if you put these into into a space it really elevates um, the space into something that will be loved by um, by communities and, and used by um, by everyone um, so we're looking at you know interactive and there's a, a real choice and what you can do here um, box up um, equipment as I say we're going to talk about that in more in more detail um, here but you can see in the center of the and the scheme here is ability to access and some and some equipment here. Um, inclusive, there's there's no barriers. Um, you know, you might not be able to, to do um, everything depending on your, your disability, but certainly you're um, you're able to, to access the, the whole space um, and everything um, within that space. Uh, as I say, activation is, is important and getting that, that data so we can provide the, the data both from um, box up and from the, the interactive and products on, on usage, um, which really has been um, described as um, as gold dust for uh, for our industry. And there's always the, the ability to you know to customize uh, the space uh, with different um, modules and different colorings um, and different um, different activities and um, throughout. Um, and the next slide is just an example of how that could look in a you know in a public um, in a public park, and um, so you know different colourings, different um, shadings, um, that type of thing. And so, um, really, this was how the um, the core concept um, kind of developed, and it's kind of the story, uh, if you like, of um, of where we got to um, so far um, with core. Uh, and we're about to, I suppose, embark on um, some further um, work and, and consultation. Um, and the first um, thing we did here was we brought in. Um, a teenage girl um, to in school, and Caitlin's going to tell you the, the story um, of this. Yeah, so um, just a few weeks ago, actually, we had um, yeah a young teenage girl come in to do some work experience with Jupiter Play, um, and for part of that experience, and I guess our own research, we asked her to create her very own core. Uh, the brief was to pull together some ideas to create a space for the girls at her school. Um, so she took a look at our products and the core catalogue and then came up with this colour palette that um, and we asked her to come up with a colour palette that appealed to her and others um, and yeah so this is what she came up with so interestingly she chose pink um, so quite subtle pink um, and quite pastely pink that she wanted to just use on little details in the space so the frames and things like that um, along with grey tones as well and so once she had chosen the colours and the products, 
um, and the types of spaces that she wanted, we actually built this up into a design. Just on the next slide, yeah. And um, as you can see, she's actually included uh, four of the different types of spaces that uh, Michael spoke about earlier. So we've got the walking route um, around the outside. She's got a hangout area, alternative seating, a hammock swing, and she's also included um, technology into the space too. So she's chosen to include the DJ booth, which we actually went to see um, the lo our local one in Nottingham and she um, absolutely loved it. So um, yeah, as you can see, she's got those um, four different types of spaces um, and yeah, it looks really nice. And then she also had some um, other ideas of what she could put in the space. So. Um, she looked at maybe you could add a treehouse type of seating in the space, which um, would be higher up. So um, kind of having your different spaces at different levels and um, adding alternative sports in there um, as well. So alternatives to football. Um, so she's, she's put in some volleyball um, and um, I think it's just volleyball in there. Um, and then also um, including lighting as well. And her reasoning is quite interesting which is to make the space more attractive, but we also know that obviously lighting will increase visibility in the space um, and it will increase that feeling of safety too. Um, and then we um, kind of built up some other examples of how we could visualize course. So this was um, an example of a more natural theme. Um, so somewhere in more of kind of a woodland um, setting, but also with more of a ball sport focus. So you've got your goal end, your basketball or netball hoop um, and your table tennis as well. And then we had a look at um, where we could include some different types of colors. So some pastel colors, um, also the walking and running routes around the outside as well, and really kind of filling the space with loads of different activities. And then we've got um, adding different activities yeah, different activities into the space as well. So incorporating uh, gym, gyms, and also we've got the Toro um, interactive in the background there. So um, enabling some sort of fencing to keep the ball kind of contained while also having different activities around it. And then sunken, um, sunken areas. So again, playing different levels um, just to add, add to the diversity of seating in the, in the different spaces as well. And then again, adding in alternative kind of sport and sport and activities. So we've got um, parkour here, which is um, increasingly becoming more and more popular with teens as well. And then we uh, took a look at um, breaking up the space for girls and taking that research of what we of what really mattered to them and from what girls had asked for in, in the consultation events that we had attended. Um, and you can see that by doing that it's really become a space for all. Um, so you've got your DJ booth, which isn't age restrictive. You've got your dance floor um, kind of area, seating areas, and you've also got some uh, playful elements for younger kids too. So the space, um, it's really just not become any kind of age restrictive space or for one particular type of user, it's definitely space for everybody. Um, so to summarize um, the benefits of the course, so. The core really is a toolkit. Um, it, it will be a physical toolkit and we also have our website toolkit. Um, and it's all about giving the community ownership of the space. You can really track the, you can see the usage data and track the ROI of your space. Um, and also the portfolio of products that we have at Jupiter Play through our Global Partners Programme allows a huge amount of diversity and variety of what can be achieved. And then finally, uh, the core is an evolving concept, so it can always be added to um, due to its layout. So I'll pass back to Michael just to go through the final section um, and box up. Excellent, um, thank you, um, Caitlin. So I mentioned box up um, a couple of times, and then I'm going to talk you through um, what that um, what that means and what that what that can do. And um, first of all, uh, we wanted just to um, understand what was the what was the need. What was the need to have um, to have uh, equipment? Uh, and quite often we see these types of um, facilities in um, in parks, and often they're, they're not being utilised to their uh, their full potential. But I suppose how many times have you have you been to a park with a facility, 
that you might do something, but you didn't have a, a basketball um, or you didn't have a, a football, you didn't have your table tennis bats and, and balls um, with you um, to, to use that. So, so I suppose that's the um, that's the, the why. But also, I think there's a big part about what if you what if you can't afford it, um, and many of our communities um, can't afford the, the equipment to to try um, different things um, and to be able to to do that. Um, and I thought this was incredible. The most deprived families in the in the UK um, only have three pounds sixteen to spend on leisure activities um, per week. So this is a this is a real this is a real issue um, for us um, in the um, in the UK. So. Um, it's fine that that capital um, investment on on facilities, um, but many families um, don't have the capacity to be able to to use this. So let's think about um, the ability to you know to equip our public open spaces. Let's think about um, the need to be able to put uh, equipment at the heart of where of where it's needed, so people could could try things, could um, could have a go, you know, at something. For the very first time, um, without having the need to, to go and buy um, some equipment, um, so this is what um, what box up um, is, and this is the this is the first um, box up um, that we've um, installed. It's in um, South East London, um, in Selwood near um, Bermondsey, a very um, built up um, housing estate um, area, um, and this has gone in um, just over a week um, ago. Um, full of equipment for the community um, to use um, on a on a new facility um, on a housing on a housing development. So box up effectively are um, are equipment lockers. Um, they're a modular system that can be um, can be built up from two to four to six to nine. Um, so you can have a number of different um, lockers. Um, you have equipment different equipment um, within those lockers. Um, people can see um, through the polycarbonate um, to see what's um, what's in them, um, and you register on an app on your phone um, with some ID, um, and you can access uh, this equipment um, free of charge um, in um, in your communities. Uh, and with that kind of information, um, we can start to you know we can start to build a picture. You know, who, who's using what, um, what's been used well, what's not, and we can start to, to develop um, things there. But having access um, to, to equipment um, on site. And I think about my, uh, my local park um, that I go to in, uh, in Rushcliffe. Uh, we, walk the, the, um, we walk the dog there um, often. There's a, a lovely um, play area. Uh, there's a, a skate park. There's a BMX track. Uh, there's two table tennis tables that, that are never um, that are never used, and there's a, a great open um, open space, and you you often um, see people uh, picnicking there. But what if that could be um, people putting up some badminton nets and, and having a go? What if you had frisbees um, there that, that people could could have a go with? Um, little rugby balls or American football that you can you, you can you can throw. Um, you could have the table tennis um, bats um, and balls. Um, you could have some, some little scooters that people could try the um, the wheel the wheel sport for the, the first time. You could have um, skateboards with helmets and pads that people could you know could have a go um, for the um, for the first time um, without finding that um, you know they, they don't like it and we spend on that having that kind of money to um, to spend. So um, that's really um, really interesting. Um, and again, you're getting the, the feedback back and the, the statistics um, back um, on this. So how does it, you know, how does it actually work? Um, you download um, the app and you you create an account um, with some um, some ID um, and your email um, and password. Uh, it's then um, RFD coded, so it knows um, it knows who you are and uh, it can um, pick up obviously the ability to um, put Bluetooth on. And open uh, an equipment locker, so you can select which locker you want to, to choose, and then you have use of that equipment um, for um, up to three hours, uh, and then you put that back, put the equipment back, um, enjoy it first, <laughs> put it back, uh, and then you uh, you take a photograph of it back in the locker, and you upload um, the material and be returned um, to the locker. Um, really, really simple um, as that. 
And there's a vast um, choice um, of equipment. The lockers obviously are a certain size, uh, so certain equipment um, fits um, well. But it's designed in such a way that the, the base, um, also in two sections of the of the base, you have a double height, so you could put um, rackets in there, you could put um, skateboards, things that wouldn't um, effectively fit in the in the locker unless you had um, the additional space um, below that. So really, um, there's a massive um, choice, and at the moment, um, really, there's about 60 different uh, games or activities um, that you can choose um, on that. But really, you could put you could put anything um, in um, in here as well. And we've got some, um, you know, some examples um, here. So as I say, we've we put our first one um, into uh, South East London. Um, but there's um, 11 gone into um, and across Ireland um, through the Active Cities um, campaign. Uh, and you can um, read on the, um, the slides the, how happy uh, they are with um, the product and, and what, they're, um, what they're getting um, from that. Um, and interestingly, just to look at some of the statistics um, from that. Um, so the first um, four weeks um, of a unit um, that went into um, Limerick, and it was went in December, mid December. So these are these are stats that were taken the first four weeks from December through to um, through to January. So the weather wasn't great, um, but it achieved 250 use, uses from 100 um, different um, unique users um, on that. And there are now uh, so we're what few months um, later, we now got 2,263 users across the 11 sites that they put into to Ireland. Um, the youngest being seven. Um, and the oldest being, um, being 92. And this has been a, a phased um, installation, so some have been in um, longer um, than others. So I'm just going to pick a, um, a few here just to, to look at what that means individually. So in, um, in Limerick, um, 145 days um, since, the, um, since the install, 627 hours of, of usage with 1,246 um, unique um, users, sorry, uses and 413 unique um, users um, of equipment. And I won't run through those stats, but you can, you can see the difference between, you've got Limerick, you've got Dublin, you've got Dundee um, in here. Um, so I think the, the evidence that, that we're getting back is that you know, people are enjoying them, people are, are using them, um, and that would be um, really, really interesting. And what does that mean? I suppose, what does that mean for, um, for you? How can, we, how can we see that? Uh, and this is just an example that we've, you know, we've drafted um, up, and you know how we could put equipment onto um, onto a site that had a a number of different activities, but to really activate um, those spaces uh, with some different types of equipment on site um, where the users um, really need um, and and want them. And just going back to um, one of the images that we we showed um, previously of a um, core. Um, in a park, and then been able to, to activate um, the core with um, various pieces um, of equipment that can be used um, either on equipment or you know outside that um, that space. Um, I think would be um, incredible to to put um, that together. So I think having the the core and having the the box up um, together really gives you a, an excellent active um, solution. And I think the, the key um, learning points really from today is you you don't really need to understand how to build things. You need to ask them what they like and show them what is um, what is possible. And I think it's that showing them what is um, what is possible really opens um, minds into you know what what can be and um, what can be achieved. Um, designing with girls and with girls in mind will produce designs um, that benefit the, the whole community. And what's really interesting here is often when you uh, you do a consultation with a with a group of boys. They tend to always be thinking about themselves. Um, so they tend to be um, thinking, I like doing this, I like doing that, I like doing that. Um, whereas girls um, are different. They actually start thinking about other people, but what, what about them? Um, and how would, how would they use that, um, that space? And I think that's really, um, really interesting. So I think designing um, with girls um, really gives you that, um, that benefit because they see the world slightly differently. Uh, and I think you end up with uh, a benefit to the, the whole the whole community. I think we need to rethink um, what it means to, to be active. And um, Caitlin 
um, challenge uh, a little bit the um, Football Foundation um, funding, which has been funded by um, the FA, it's been funded by, uh, but also funded by Sport England. Um, and we think that um, it's very narrow um, in its uh, in its thoughts and um, in what can be the outcomes um, of that. And I think in certain situations uh, it will work well, but I think um, it's not the, the only solution. I think there's other things um, here that we really need to, to look at, in particular breaking down the cage and breaking down the, those barriers um, where um, teenage girls actually feel, um, feel unsafe and feel threatened um, in an area. Um, so thinking about rethinking about being active, moving away from sports to be more more activity. Let's get people moving more um, in lots of um, in lots of different ways. Um, we believe that core and box up uh, can really deliver an inclusive um, active space um, for the for the whole community. I'm just going to leave you um, today on this um, you know this quote involving I've spoke, touched on this already involving girls in urban development will make the city better for everyone. Girls plan and design with diversity and different needs in mind. Participatory, I can't say that word, participatory <laughs> processes are key for planning a city that works for everyone. If we let citizens that are really heard be the experts, our cities and communities will become more inclusive, equal and sustainable. And I'm pretty sure that that's what we're all um, striving um, to, um, to achieve. Uh, so we'd really love to um, spend some time um, engaging. We've got um, 10 minutes um, for um, you know, so for some, some Q&A. Um, obviously, I've seen some things come up on the, the chat, but we've obviously not been able to, um, to, to read them and digest them, but hopefully um, Sam has been able to do um, a little bit of that in the, in the background and um, maybe fire some of your, your questions um, to us. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Michael and, and Kaylin. That was, uh, yeah, always enjoy hearing uh, you both talk about the topic. Uh, I think with CORE, it's such an evolving uh, concept that we've got and is really brilliant to have it in these spaces where we can you know go out to the industry understand thoughts opinions feedback i know that uh steven you you're putting in some uh, really good comments uh, about about your experience uh, with working uh, with play in particular uh, as well and uh, we've had quite a few comments uh, and questions about box up in particular so i'll just uh fire them over i mean mary beth um daisy uh, bernie uh, or just understanding i suppose from uh the box up perspective uh, yeah how do we stop communities yeah or how do we stop the equipment going missing okay it's, it's always the first it's always the first question um, that, that comes up and um, first thing is that the users um, obviously I've had an interest and they've, they've logged on and they've given an email address password um, and they've given a form of form of ID so we know who's been using the, the equipment so um, if it doesn't um, get returned then they do get a follow-up um, text um, or um, email um, or other follow-up and actually, most of the time, when that happens, it gets returned. Um, and if it doesn't get returned, uh, then gen generally, there's a reason it broke. Um, or often it's the football, and the football went over a fence, or we couldn't return it, it went onto a railway line, or, or whatever. So that tends to be um, the issue. But I think people are generally interested in, in using it to put it back um, for, the, for the community. Um, if, it, if it doesn't, then um, they get blocked from from future from future use, um, and we build in to to the costs some replacement um, equipment um, because we know that things will get damaged or um, or go missing. So um, that's part of the um, that's part of the service. Um, but theft hasn't been um, a massive issue. This is cheap equipment. It's not state of the art um, equipment um, that's um, that's in, in here. It's about you know just giving people the opportunity to to try things and, and have a bit of fun. I hope that answers your, your question. Yeah, brilliant. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. And I suppose just on the on the theme of box up as well, uh, Bernie has asked: uh, Is there an annual fee uh, for the box up setup? Um, no, no, there isn't an annual fee. Um, but uh, after four years, um, then there is a fee, and I can't think off the top of my head what it is. But it's um, it used to be per um, set up a user. And they have just actually changed that this week so that it was much more, um, much more transparent um, than that and could be could be budgeted for. Um, so I'll have to just come back to you um, on that with um, with a definite answer on that. Yeah, brilliant. 
Oh, that's ideal. Thank you. And yeah, uh, anyone else who has any questions, please feel free to to pop them um, in the chat. Uh, we're more than yeah, more than open to yeah anything about box up, anything about core. Um, we can really uh, answer any questions uh, you have. Um, and I think yeah, just um, Stephen made a really interesting uh, comment around the the sort of design process um, and you know his experience um, within that. And I suppose from our perspective, you know, that holistic approach uh, is, is always key. Um, and I think the adaptability um, within core um, is always good uh, to have. And I mean, Michael, in terms of, of from your perspective um, in particular, you know, how how do you see this fitting into the sort of different uh, environments that, that we work in? I know we go from the urban to the, the natural. Um, yeah, what would, what would you say the best approach uh, for that is? I think it's always um, important that um, a facility fits within within the environment um, depending on what that environment is so I think that's a lot of that's about the, the where it's going um, and thinking about the, the material choices and the, the colorings um, etc so yeah I think there's a, um, a palette really to be chosen and that's the I think that's the great thing about the adaptive, um, the read that we can adapt um, the, the core with the different colorings and we've shown some of that already today um, but also there's a choice of, of materials. Um, there as well, depending on the, the location. So, yeah, I think that's um, very much how we would we would always design a scheme you know, to suit the next location. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, and then Claire's asked a great question um, because you know, of course, in these scenarios, we're not always going to be working with a blank canvas, uh, an open space. Uh, a lot of the the schemes that we might be working are on are sort of regenerations uh, of existing multi-use games areas. So, uh, Claire has asked, uh, is it? ever possible to successfully upgrade an existing mugger without removing or lowering uh, the boundaries as the research seems to show uh, that this is the main thing uh, that reduces inclusivity without removing the barrier sorry I, I, I didn't understand the question um, yeah is it possible to do? no without removing or, or lowering boundaries um, as the research shows that, that this is the main thing uh, that reduces inclusivity I, th I think the research shows that um, the having the, the fencing around it actually reduces inclusivity. That's what the research shows. Um, okay. Not all. Um, so I think that's maybe something's put been um, I don't know maybe misunderstood. And here the, the research really is that girls don't want to be in an enclosed space um, with high fencing um, around it. So um, I think if you were redeveloping the uh, an existing um, Mugga actually be quite easy by taking down that um, fence and then breaking up the, the space with lots of um, lots of activity because most times with a um, a mugger the uh, the cost is on fencing and tarmac um, effectively and um, so so yeah it would be it would be great to be able to to look at um, a space an existing mugger and turn it into something something different. Yes, I hope, that, I hope that answers your um, your question. Perfect. Yeah, Claire. If there's any other comments or questions, please feel free to uh, yeah give us a shout and reach reach out obviously down directly, um, and we can yeah we can have a, a further discussion on that. I see Mary Beth asked, do you pay do users pay a charge? No, it, it, this is free to the user. And that's the the real uh, benefit um, of this that we can we can get equipment into the hands of people that maybe can't afford it and, and maybe wouldn't um, any other any other way. So so that's what we're trying to, to achieve here. Yeah, perfect. And uh, yeah, Varsha has uh, just put in a great link uh, for us as well, a uh, representative from uh, Women in Sport, which is always nice to have on the call, especially how you know how it's helped uh, as design uh, the core concept um, in particular. So please feel free to to follow that one um, and gain more insight on that. But I think, in all honesty, that covers all of the questions. A couple minutes early, which is usually strange for us uh, to first with it. Um, but yeah, we're going to hang around um, on here uh, for five ten minutes uh, afterwards. So if there's any further sort of comments questions, we'll pop them in. Please feel free to pop them in the chat. It'll still be active. Um, and yeah, um, with uh, today's session, um, of course, uh, this has been recorded. Uh, so if you wanted to rewatch uh, or share with any of your team members, please feel free to, to use the link uh, which you signed up for. Uh, but yeah, um, Michael and Caitlin, uh, any closing remarks, comments, questions, or have you done enough talking for this afternoon? Uh, 
<laughs> no, uh, all good. Really, thank you for um, for attending. And if you you have anything that you would like to uh, to discuss with us, please uh, please do um, reach out. Um, we're also happy to to share uh, this with um, with your teams um, as well, so we can do this as a as a CPD as an internal presentation if um, if you so desire. That's brilliant. Yeah, we'll um we'll we'll be sending out um a follow up to the webinar as well, which will have the uh, video link on there as well. Um, so yeah, you can get in touch with us um in response to that as well. Perfect. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you all for your time, and we hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.